you may be wondering, why Frankenstein? This year's theme, A Minnesota Frankenstein, is a tribute to our co-founder, Earl Bakken, in celebration of the 100th anniversary of his birth. Earl's fascination with electromagnetism began with the 1931 film Frankenstein. What better way to honor his legacy than to create a Minnesota-inspired version of this classic story as a radio play? It beautifully combines science, imagination, and a touch of local flavor. With that, I'm pleased to welcome tonight's MC, sports director at WCCO TV and host of Sports to the Max on WCCO Radio. Give it up for Mike Max. We need to update that bio a little bit. <laughs> I'm still at CCO TV, big wave to Carrie Levin. Thank you for coming out tonight. And you are in store for what you already know uh, is a great evening. And there's so many different people that have helped make this possible tonight. Um, but what it really comes down to is when you take some of the best talent uh, in the Twin Cities and you put it together and you allow Dave Lee uh, to put his touches on it as he did last year's War of the Worlds, you got something really, really special. Yeah. Let's meet tonight's cast. From KMOJ Radio, he'll be the narrator, Freddie Bell. From KTCA TV and WCCO Radio legend, Eric Escola. These people are all legends, so just uh, I don't need to say that again because you know they're all legends that are on the red carpet tonight. From KTCA TV, Minnesota and Minnesota Public Radio, as Justine Kathy Werzer. <laughs> WCCO Radio as Frankenstein the Monster tonight, Igor. Captain McDougal and Fabian, only one guy can do that, Tim Russell. <laughs> she worked at KMSP TV, WCCO TV, WTCN TV, and that doesn't even do it justice. She's done it all. As Elizabeth tonight, Nancy Nelson. I can't wait for this one. <laughs> As Dr. Victor Frankenstein tonight, WCCO TV and radio, Don Shelby. It was an absolute joy to work with Dave Lee when he put together Minnesota Hospital. You people remember that when he'd do it and at the State Fair? And, and I don't know how many people realize it, but Dave wrote the whole thing. And so you know him as an on-air personality, but his talent goes so far beyond that. And he did it last year with War of the Worlds and tonight with Frankenstein as Captain Walton and crew member Lars, the one and only Dave Lee. <laughs> Now, when you hear, you get ready for this, maybe you experienced it last year, remember, but when you hear the sound, SFX, they told me to pause after I say, when you hear the sound. Well, we'll see if this is the right one. It indicates a flashback or return from a flashback. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> this show is inspired by the 1818 novel Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley in the summer of 1819. Famously known as the year without a summer, Mary Shelley traveled to Geneva with her husband and friends to enjoy the Alpine air. Bad weather forced them indoors where they decided to have a contest to see who could write the scariest story. 
inspired by Luigi Galvani's discovery that electricity could reanimate dismembered animal parts, that old story. Mary Shelley created one of the first modern science fiction works in an enduring horror classic, Frankenstein. Now, and this is important, as you experience tonight's performance, I invite you to close your eyes from time to time and let your imagination take over. These incredible voices and sounds will transport you into the story. They have worked long and hard and been rehearsing this for a long time. <laughs> I'm serious. Now, sit back, relax, close your eyes from time to time, but above all else, enjoy as we bring you a Minnesota Frankenstein. The Pavic Museum of Electronic Communication now presents a live radio drama based on Mary Shelley's book, Frankenstein, or The Modern Prometheus. The story begins with the crew of the Great Lakes supply ship, North Star, on a winter journey from Duluth to Thunder Bay. A harsh winter has created sheets of ice just offshore of Grand Portage. As they had many times before during prior winter voyages, the experienced crew waits patiently for the storm to subside. However, the storm rages and becomes more intense. The ice becomes even stronger and locks the ship in Superior's grip. It would be a memorable voyage, not just for the crew, but for generations to come. Mr. Boyd, seems we will be here longer than we would like. Yeah, the trouble, Captain Walton, is keeping the crew occupied. Uh, give them as much work as you can. All we right. may be here a while. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain, take a look. To what is it? Look across the ice. Is it a, a man? A man. Are all the crew accounted for, Mr. Well, Boyd? Well, they are, Captain. I'm, look, I'll, I'll run down and, and see they help the, the man aboard. Very strange. The crew is bringing him aboard, sir. All right, sir. Freaking starboard. He's still alive. Mr. Boyd, lower the rope. He's quite clean up. Get him into a cabin quickly. He's real weak. Once aboard, the rescued man rests overnight before the ship's captain attempts to understand the circumstances. If nothing else, he knows it keeps him temporarily stranded crew from getting too restless. They're now busy with speculation. However, the priority remains to sail as soon as possible to Thunder Bay. Meanwhile, Captain Walton visits the mysterious stranger. Come in. I am Captain Walton. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm sure you would have done the same. Why were you out on the ice in that storm? It's a long story. Well, I brought you something to help revive you from the wind and cold. How kind of you. How about we begin with a toast to, let's say, renewed life. You have no idea. Oh, how? Wow, that's invigorating. Uh, seems you might need it. The crew found you on the ice. They sank them as well. Oh, they also saw something else. He did? Well, let's find out. Lars, can you come down here quickly? Aye, aye, Captain. Yeah, you bet, sir. <laughs> Lars, this is, um, this is, um... My apologies. I am Victor, Dr. Victor Frankenstein. Lars, what else did you see on the ice before you found Dr. Frankenstein? Well, there was wind, a lot of snow, but we thought we saw something. But you know, it was not a crystal clear day. You know, it wasn't what I would call a top ten weather day. <laughs> Did you see a very large man? Oh, I don't know about that. Like I said, the conditions were really something. However, we did see a footprint in the snow near where we found the doctor, but you know, it could have been a bear, not unusual in these parts. That'll be all, Lars. Yeah, you betcha, Captain. Lars, thank you, too. Oh, golly, for sure, yeah. Just glad you're up and around. You were frozen like a dead carp out there. <laughs> 
Judging by your accent, you aren't from around here then, are you? All right, Lars, dismissed. Oh, that's fine, Captain. I'm originally from Vienna, but my mother moved here as a visiting medical professor at the University of Minnesota. Uh, Lars, if I may, but it sounds like you aren't from here either. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm born and raised in Tofty. <laughs> I'm red, white, and blue. Which, by the way, you were pretty much only blue when we picked you up, but you're looking real good right now. Well, better at least, I guess. Thank you very much. Enough, Lars. Back to work. Aye, aye, Captain Bolton. Real good, then. Yeah, you bet. It's nice to meet you, Doc. It's a pleasure for me. A medical doctor on the frozen ice of Lake Superior. Yeah, you just can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Oh, for the love of heat, look at this. Captain's busting open a bottle of the good stuff. What is it we're drinking? <laughs> it's quite strong. Well, this is Aquavit. <laughs> it can bring the dead back to life. <laughs> I wish I had known that. Dismissed, Lars. Yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> Aboard the ship, an anxious Captain Walton waited to hear the story from Dr. Frankenstein. As a young man, Captain, probably like you, I was fascinated with nature and science. I excelled in science, biology, but my life at present means nothing to me. My friends and family, they have now been hurt or murdered. And it's all because of me. Well, I'm not sure you know what you're saying. Captain, you're looking at a man who unleashed a horrible killer on this world. Now, are you a fugitive from justice? I'm not a fugitive, but I am being punished. I, I don't understand. Somewhere in this storm near here, there's a monster, a creature who delights in taking human life. None of us are safe. Your hardships have made you to oh, imagine things, Dr. Frankenstein. I swear it's the truth. Well, if you care to tell me about it, I'm sure I will make a good listener. Yeah. My name is Ben Victor Frankenstein. As a young man, I focus on sciences. Through my studies and research and reading, I, I realized it might be possible for a man to create man through the tremendous power of electricity. And you're serious. I became aware that the capabilities when I caught once in a thunderstorm where the lightning had split an oak tree in half. That spare he must have caught the spark. <laughs> <laughs> One more time, Lars. You'll be walking back to Tofty. Everyone return to your duties immediately. Uh, uh, nice, uh, nice. Apologies, Dr. Frankenstein. This storm is disrupting their routines. Lars' brain would have been interesting to use in my creation. Well, now I'm even more confused. When that lightning struck the oak tree, the knowledge came to me that just as electricity can destroy life, so too can it create it. Then I knew I would not rest until I created a man. So you created a man, Doctor? Yes, yes, yes. Then my father approached me about the idea of moving upon my graduation, and we did to a brand new University of Minnesota and a chance to continue in secrecy my horrible resolve to create life. This is uh, very hard to comprehend. And I, I fell in love with a woman named Elizabeth. We planned to get married. I begged my father to build me a laboratory in the cabin down north of Minneapolis at St. Paul, where it would be easier to accomplish this misfortunate goal of mine. And he agreed. And later, I took him to my service a man named Igor. He had physical issues from injuries, but a keen and agile brain. And he was interested in my experiments. And for months, we worked night and day to create a creature that would be strong and good looking and noble. Did you succeed? Yes, and, and no. I realized I did not create a man, I created a monster. Uh a monster. Yes. What were you doing out here when we found you? I hired a crew to follow the clues that the monster was leaving me, tormenting me. All my closest friends and parents to become injured. I was the miserable one that lived on. I could not die until I destroyed that which I had created. <laughs> the monster! 
And do you believe the monster? It's here. Aboard this vessel. Mr. Boyd. Boys up. Come here once and bring a pistol with you. Captain Button, the monster is out there. The ship was still locked in the frozen waters of Lake Superior. Baron Frankenstein was convinced the monster was still there. Captain Walton, still doubting Dr. Frankenstein's story, began a journal to document what he'd been told. Victor Frankenstein weakly attempted to get out of bed, but the captain would not allow it. Did you bring the pistol? Anyone out there? Nope, I don't think so, sir. I'm not sure what it is, but actually something is out there, sir. What did you see? Well, I, I didn't see anything, but I heard your call and rushed down the companionway, and then suddenly out of the darkness, I was knocked aside. When I arose, there was no sign of anyone. I, I dashed to the deck again, and there was no one there, and Liza's on watch. He reported he saw nothing. That I created soon, I must destroy. I, I'm sorry, Doctor, what does that mean? It, it's a strange story, Mr. Boyd, hmm. but as of now, I want you to stand guard outside this door tonight. I think the months of a turn. Sir, I think the storm has become worse. Yeah, it, it, it would be difficult, Dr. Frankenstein, for anyone or anything to survive out there. As Mr. Boyd guarded the door, Dr. Frankenstein rested. When he awoke, the captain was notified and promptly sat down in the Baron's quarters, still skeptical, but eager to learn. After I left the university, my father helped me to build a laboratory on the lake, not far from grandfather's death in the city of Marseille. He and I would visit graveyards to soon freshly buried bodies. I was going to create a man, and the creature of my making was to be handsome and intelligent. I know I was neglecting my fiance Elizabeth and all my family and friends, but I was determined. My closest friend Henry stayed at our home. He had been friends at the university. What did he know? Not much, except as my experiment near completion, I became possessed by it. Imagine Captain Bond in my lab late one afternoon, looking at the window and seeing the sky dark and overcast. Igor standing by my side, down again, glancing at the bench upon which lay this huge, inanimate figure. Igor. Yes, Doctor. I think tonight we will see the end of our work. Do you mean the figure will come to life tonight, Dr. Frankenstein? If the thunderstorm takes place, there will be sufficient energy to bring this inanimate mass to life. Yes. For months we worked on it. Tonight, I will have created a man. My work will be rewarded. You know, I, I'm afraid, Dr. Frankenstein, that we should not do this. Why are you afraid, Igor? Throughout the centuries, men and women have dreamed of doing this, yes. but I will succeed. Yes, but you may not be meant to succeed. Who's there? It's Henry. May I uh, come in? Henry. I suspect the nature of your experiments, Victor, and I almost dread to ask if my suspicions are correct. Look on this bench, Henry. Tell me what you see. I see my greatest fear. My creation. Victor, you must not do this. You are like Igor, both afraid. Victor, your life is bound upon this strange experiment. You're completely neglecting your fiance, and she feels it too. She will be proud of me. I will be the greatest scientist the world has ever known. I beg of you to stop this experiment. Do not try to bring life to this body. Destroy what you've already done, then marry Elizabeth and go away somewhere. You do not look well, my friend. You are asking too much of me, Henry. I cannot give up my life's work. This will revolutionize the world. Experiments like this are not meant to succeed. Please stay in my laboratory with me and Igor tonight and see that my experiment succeeded. Well, you must immediately take Elizabeth into your confidence. You ask her to be here tonight as well. Dr. Frankenstein told his fiance the truth. Initially, she was horrified, but eventually consented to be present in the lab that night. After dinner, Elizabeth, Henry, 
Igor and Dr. Frankenstein entered the laboratory as the storm developed rapidly. Thunder roared, and there were great streaks of lightning on the bench laid the inanimate figure. We are about to witness one of the most extraordinary experiments in the history of the world. Yes. By means of police, Igor and I will raise the figure to the top of the tower, where it remain for an hour. Then we will lower it, and I believe the figure will come to life. Oh, promise me, Victor, if the experiment is a failure, never attempt to do this again. I'll do not worry, Elizabeth. I don't think this really can be successful. We oh. shall soon find out. He got us wrong is at his height. He me place the body on the lid. I beg of you, Victor, do not do this. Oh, no. There we go. No. Oh. Yeah. The body is in place. Now, we must be patient. In an hour's time, I will have created life. Oh, oh. Above them, exposed to the full fury of the storm, lay the lifeless body which he had made. They watched for a full hour, and then Dr. Frankenstein motioned to a reluctant Igor to move over towards the pulley. An agitated Henry and Elizabeth followed. It was time to lower it. Stop! Stop! My One hands more, are please! Trembling. You. My hands are trembling. No, stop! Victor, stop. One more plea. Please do not proceed with this. When you bring that body down, you must destroy it. I am a scientist no. conducting an experiment. He got lower the body. Yes, Doctor. Now let's get him off the lift. Yes. What are you going to do? I'm going to unread the bandages. Oh, nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. I must pray. We should all pray. I must pray. It's, it's not too late, Victor. It's I'm on the verge of the world's greatest oh. achievement. No! Oh. The storm is getting even more violent. It, it's almost as if the heavens agree with me. Oh, no! It's, it's, oh, no. it's, it's, oh. it's ghastly! No. It's just horrible, Doctor. Oh, no, I, I thought it would be handsome. It's not handsome, Victor. <laughs> the eyelids. The eyelids, I saw them flutter. It's looking oh. at us. It's alive. <gasps> My experiment has succeeded. No other man has ever had such power. Victor, this is too horrible. Destroy it now. To destroy it now would be murder. Doctor, can it speak? It must learn to speak. What are you going to do now, Victor? I have a room ready for my creation. We should destroy this creature now. It's, it's not a man. It, it's a monster. Yeah. Help me. Help yeah. me. Help me to move it to the room. Be careful, Doctor. This way. Here we go. All right. Yeah, we've there. seen lock the door. And I'm asking you, you've got to remain here in the laboratory, yes. just outside the secure door. Do yes. not enter the room, and do not let anyone enter as no, well. Doctor. Yes. Look. He just seems to be able to focus his eyes. It's looking straight at you, Dr. Frankenstein. It's terrifying. The extraordinary power of electricity must have stretched the monster to be taller and bigger and, and changed its facial structure. Now, we'll leave it here. Go outside. Yes, Doctor. You go lock the door. Yes. Dr. Frankenstein, your story is difficult to believe. So what became of the monster, your creation? I was weak and ill that night and fell into a deep and troubled sleep. In the morning, I awakened to find both Henry and Elizabeth standing by the side of my bed. What are you doing here? Well, I'm... I'm worried about you. I must go to the laboratory at once. Victor, I beg you to destroy the creature just as you gave it life. You'll never be happy while the creature lives, and neither will I. Elizabeth is right, Victor. The result is a hideous monster, which you cannot unleash upon the world, or it will forever be on your conscience. Uh, maybe. Maybe you both are 
correct. I know we're right. Please, Victor, please. So, you regretted at least somewhat your experiment? I considered the alternative, but then Henry and I walked across the laboratory and entered the room, and I called for Igor. You know, it's, it's strange that Igor does not answer. I told him not to leave. Look, look at the door of the room where, where you put the creek. There, there's no door there now. That could have happened. Oh no! What is it, Henry? Igor! He's, he's dead, Henry. This is horrible. The monster's escaped. He murdered Igor. What is the authority going to say? How am I going to explain the broken body? Well, you're going to have to tell the truth they, to the police. They will not believe me, Henry. They will think I am mad. You know, you were mad attempting this experiment. The search went on for days, turning into weeks, and still there was no trace of the monster. Victor sought out Elizabeth, and as time passed, there came a day, many months later, when Victor convinced himself that the monster had perished, and Victor approached Elizabeth about getting away for a short time. But does your conscience allow you to leave here? Are you sure there's nothing further that will be heard of this, this horrible creature? It's been some months since the monster disappeared, yes. and nothing has been heard of it. I think it is safe for us to go now, Elizabeth. How long shall we be away? Seven months, perhaps. Then we shall return. And please say then you will marry me as soon as possible. No. Oh. Victor, there's only one request I want to make of you. My yes. sister's child, William, needs a home. His mother's very ill. His father is dead. Yes. Can he please come live with us, of Victor? Of course. Oh. I'm very fond of William. Thank you. Thank you. For several months, they had a delightful holiday in New England. During their absence, they had left the child, William, with the nurse, Justine. She was a friend of the family for years. A few days after their return, Justine approached Elizabeth. Shall I take him out for a walk? Do you, do you think that the weather is clear enough? What do you think, Victor? By all means, the sun is shining brightly now. Although, there are the clouds on the horizon. Oh, clouds on the horizon? Uh, Ma'am, may I take the child for a walk? By the way, Justine, do you think that the young Master William shows promise? Um, he can be a strong-willed child, ma'am, but, but I am strict with him. Oh, oh, you mustn't be too strict. Remember, we were all young once. Uh, yes, ma'am, I'll remember that. Now, don't take him any further than the lake. If there are any signs of an approaching storm, bring William home at once. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I will, madam. Okay. Over here, Elizabeth, look at the window. See those strange black clouds. Oh, Victor, now don't think about the monster. But it is he dead? Hmm. The body has never been found. But don't you think we would have heard if the monster had still been alive? I suppose so. Did you hear that? That, that thunder frightened me. Oh, darling, darling, don't think of the past. Now, let's talk of something else. Well, like your friend Henry, who will be here tomorrow. I would be glad to see Henry again, but in a way, he did remind me of the horrors of the past. Well, now you must do your best to focus. You must try to forget that monster ever existed. I must tell myself that I created a monster, and now that monster is dead, I will never see it again. Victor, what do I hear? That dreadful sound, oh, yes. strange dragging footsteps. Oh. The footsteps are approaching, Victor. Look, Elizabeth, the door is opening. Oh, oh, oh. Frankenstein, my master, we meet again. Oh, this cannot my be. Master. Yes, it's been many months since we met, my master. Oh. And now I have all that you desire. Look, I can walk, move freely, think speak. Where, where have you been? Living in the woods these many months, 
watching the locals, learning to speak as they speak, although I refuse to say you betcha. <laughs> almost dying from intolerable loneliness. I come to make terms with you, my master. Terms? What mean you by that? Victor, he looks horrible. Calm yourself, please, Elizabeth. I am an object of hatred and scorn and destruction wherever I go. You did this, Frankenstein. You gave me life but a life which is filled with misery. All men, all women turn from me. If I had a gun, I would put an end to your life which I gave you. Mm -hmm. I would destroy you. I do not wish to die, no. I wish to be happy, as others are. What do you ask of me? You made me, gave me life. Now, make me a mate. <gasps> A woman who may share my life with me. What you ask is impossible. Mm -hmm. It shall be my mission in life to destroy you. Did you not kill my servant? That matters not. <laughs> I've come to make a bargain with you. Give me a companion, someone to share my loneliness. Why should I not know happiness as others know it? Victor, you must not grant his request. Fear not, Elizabeth. <laughs> I will never grant it. <gasps> So be it, Frankenstein. You and yours shall suffer for this. Meaning what? Meaning I've killed one man, I can kill others. Oh. And unless you heed my demand and fashion for me a mate, oh. then you and all your family will suffer. But I will not kill you. You shall live on until I bend you to my will. Oh. The creature shall rule the master. <laughs> Victor, be careful. You are powerless. Oh. We shall meet again. You have refused my demand, but you shall hear from me. Farewell, Frankenstein. Farewell. Baron Frankenstein awakens the next day as Captain Walton arrives at his quarters. I trust that you had refreshing sleep, Dr. Frankenstein. As well as I could expect. Do you feel inclined to tell me some more of your story? Uh, I sent for the county sheriff and begged his officers would look for the monster some little time later. The storm burst in all its fury. Elizabeth approached me anxiously. Victor, do you know that Justine and William haven't come back home? Uh, you sure they have not come back home? I've searched the entire house. Didn't you instruct Justine to come home before the storm broke? And they've been out for such a long time. Do you think we can go out and look for them? They only went to the edge of the lake. They cannot be far away. Oh, I'm worried, Victor. I'm worried. You, you know that monster is loose out there. Suppose it would attack William or Justine. There's no fear of that. Undoubtedly, Justine and Vilma just taking shelter from the storm. Oh, I hope you're right. Oh, oh, how good to see you've returned. Uh, Where's William? He's not here, ma'am. What? I, I, I took him to the lake where I was playing with him. Then he, he ran away from me and went into the woods. I, I took a long time to find him, but I failed. I, I called his name time and time again, but there was no reply. And then the storm broke, and, and I'd been out in the rain looking for him, and I thought maybe he came to the house. Oh, no. Uh, Victor, Victor, you must go at once. Find the sheriff and his men. Tell them to forget about the monster. They have to find William. Hey, courage, Elizabeth. I'm sure they will find William somewhere. Oh, oh I swear, I swear, ma'am, I meant no harm. You should have stayed with him, Justine. Oh, I'll never forgive myself. Oh, go and change your clothes and then come down here. We'll wait patiently for Baron Frankenstein to return. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Victor, you haven't gone yet. I have left word for the sheriff and his men to look for William, and, and I will return as soon as possible. Yes, yes, yes. For two hours they searched, wandering through the woods, calling the child's name, but there was no reply. At last, Victor returned home to find Elizabeth and Justine waiting. 
Victor, is there any news? Did you see any sign of William? No. Oh, it was my fault. No, Victor, what's become of William? Did the sheriff uh, return? No, we haven't seen him come back yet. The, the storm is abating. He's passing. We will continue our search all through the night. Listen, listen, I hear men's voices. The sheriff's returning. Bring him in here, Justine. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I blame myself, Victor. We should never have allowed Justine to take William out today. She should never have allowed him to be out of her sight. Ah! What is that? Who's screaming? Ah! Who's screaming? Oh, Baron Frankenstein, a, a near tragedy has occurred. My men have found the injured body of William. William? What's his condition? Justine saw his body when we were carrying it in, and my men are holding oh. her. William is bruised. I gotta tell you, he's badly hurt. Oh, Sheriff, what happened? I only know that we were searching for this monster that Baron Frankenstein spoke of, and we looked through some bushes on the edge of the lake, and there we found William. No, no. Yeah, he, he was moaning in pain. Did you send for a doctor? Of course we did. No. Do you think the boy tripped or fell into the water? No. I, I think he was pushed into the water. <laughs> And I think Justine was responsible for this crime. Oh, no, no, you mustn't say that. You have been away, both of you, but it's common talk around here that Justine disliked that boy. She was always scolding him. And she told people that he was a difficult child, and we think that in a, a fit of rage, she pushed him in the water. Oh, that's not possible. Well, we will question her now. Tell him to bring Justine in here. I know this is most distressing for you, Baron Frankenstein, but I have to do my duty. And if my suspicions are correct, then Justine will be guilty. Oh, get your hand off of me. Men, bring Justine in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Here she is. Oh, my God. Why have these men seized me? I have committed no crime. Hear me, girl. Is it not true that you always scolded that child? He was a disobedient child, and, and he was in my charge. I had, I had to correct his faults. Yeah, yeah, you're a woman of unbridled temper, and <laughs> at times you've been known to strike that child. Why, this is news to me, Sheriff. Yeah, she's been seen striking the child. Oh, that is not true. That is true. No. Now, will you admit that at times, at times you've struck him? Yes, I, I've been stern with him, but he needs discipline. Justine, ain't it true that in a fit of rage, you pushed that child into the lake? No, mm. I swear I did not push him into the lake. He ran away from me. He went into the woods. I, I, I couldn't find him. Y you must believe I me. I don't believe you. Oh, Baron Frankenstein, you know I wouldn't hurt the child. Address your remarks to me, Justine. Is it not true that... In a fit of rage, you pushed that child into the lake and then you were afraid of your mad act. You wandered around in the rain for hours and pretended you were looking for him. <gasps> it is not true. Well, did you yell at William today? I was angry with him for running away from me and I said I would, I would slap him if I caught him. Well, you terrified that child. I did not. I'm going to arrest you and you'll stand trial in due time. <sighs> Baron Frankenstein, I swear that the child came to no harm at my hand. I I've served your family well for these many years. I didn't hurt William. You cannot believe it of me. I, I beg that you do not allow him to arrest me. Sheriff, I think you're being rather hasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that Justine pushed the child into the lake. Well, Baron, it is my duty to arrest criminals, and I suspect her. <gasps> There's no proof that I did it. Well, then we'll find some. Sheriff, why do you say that Justine hurt the child? Who else could have done it? Oh, I don't know. Now, Justine, it'll be better for you if you tell the truth. But if you persist in this denial and the court finds you guilty, you will end up in jail or worse, especially if that child does not recover. Oh, but I'm not guilty. Uh, perhaps Elizabeth is not aware that at times you struck the child. What? I had to correct his faults. You had no right to strike him. Oh, madam, I fall to my knees before oh. you. I swear I am innocent no. of this charge. Please, please help me. Enough, Justine. You'll get a fair trial. Thank you. 
This girl is not to be taken from the house. Well, what are you doing, Baron Frankenstein? She did not injure the child. Well, what? How, how would you know? Did you not observe the marks upon the child's throat? He was almost strangled. Something must have alarmed the monster. The marks were the same as those on the throat of my poor servant, Igor. I am in reality the reason William almost was murdered. Victor, what are you saying? It's true, Elizabeth. No. The monster almost killed William, and I created the monster. No. He has done this for revenge because I refuse to grant his request. Do you not agree that Justine is guilty of attempted murder? Oh, no. You can release Justine. She is innocent. Chef, did I not ask you and your men to search for the monster? The monster, which you say you've created, <laughs> likely story, Baron Frankenstein. Do not doubt my word. I say that Justine is not guilty of this. Take your men and go in search of the monster. Have no mercy. Shoot him on sight. But I've only heard rumors of this creature. Is it true that he's your creation? You made him up in a laboratory at the back of the house? It is true. Now go. Do not question me any further. Find him and kill him. Well then, there is much work to be done yet tonight, and we'll take our leave, Baron Frankenstein. Oh, uh, Baron Frankenstein, thank you so much for saving all me. All right, all right, Justine. Let's just hope the human covers. Yes, of course. Thank you. It was your own headstrong stubbornness that the monster was brought into being, Victor. I pleaded with you. We begged you not to proceed with this experiment, but you turned a deaf ear to us, and as a result, Igor has been murdered and William has been seriously injured. It will forever be upon your conscience. Elizabeth, please do not turn against me. Oh, had you really loved me, you would not have proceeded with these experiments. You would have destroyed the monster you have made. But you were selfish. You were not searching for it, were you? Why do you not destroy this evil thing? Very well, Elizabeth. I will go now and shall not return until I have slain the monster. Yes. Hopefully before Henry is here tomorrow. Did you succeed in finding the monster, Baron Frankenstein? I wandered out into the night. I walked through the woods. I traveled for miles and miles until I was footsore and weary. But I still saw no trace. Then, just as dawn was breaking, I came to a little clearing at the side of the woods. Greetings, Frankenstein. I thought that you would follow me. <laughs> I have followed you so that I may kill you. <laughs> this time I have a gun. You cannot kill me. We shall see. <laughs> oh, 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 I am wounded, Frankenstein, but I, I will not die. I will take that gun from no, you. you will not. Yes, I will. Oh. Ah, you are my creator, Frankenstein. You gave me life, a life that is filled with misery and wretchedness. You gave me this hideous form, which turned all men against me. Tell me, why did you hurt the child, William? Because he meant something to you. I wanted you to suffer as I have suffered. And I swear this, Frankenstein, if you do not give me a mate, then you shall have no mate. I shall slay your wife. You cannot threaten to kill my wife. Unless you commit to create another creature, then your wife will die. Baron Frankenstein related his experiences to Captain Walton from master quarters of the ship. While they were there, still icebound in Lake Superior near Grand Marais, Captain Walton spent much time with Baron Frankenstein, who was gradually recovering. Well, Baron Frankenstein, I thought perhaps you might share a look at my journals. I have written down your story very carefully. I'm glad because something tells me that I 
We never returned to civilization. Oh, you must not say that. You are recovering. I know, I know. But I dare not return until I am certain the monster is dead. Well, you will pardon me by contradicting you, but, Doctor, we do not know that. I think your monster must have perished in this blizzard. Tell me. What part of my story did I reach yesterday? He threatened to kill your wife unless you created a mate for it. Yes, yes, yes. I sat there and I was horrified at the monster's words. He gazed at me for some time and then I... You seek to arouse my sympathy. Do you not know that you have turned my life against me? But I had heeded her advice. You would never have lived and I came to destroy you the day after your creation, but I was too late. You had escaped and you had already taken life. I will take no more lives, if you wish. And if you remember to accept my request. When I left your home, I wandered through the woods. And there I saw the child. As soon as he saw me, he screamed and sought to run away, but I grabbed him by the arm spoke softly to him, begging him not to be afraid. He told me that his uncle was Dr. Frankenstein, and that I would be punished if I harmed him at the mention of your name. I trembled with rage, and I started choking the child only to be startled by a search party. However, I vow this. I shall hurt all your family unless you create for me a mate. But I cannot do You it. must do it, or I will work against you. So you shall curse the very day you were born. I curse it now. I seek to reason with you. All I ask is a mate. Wait, do I see compassion in your eyes? And if I consent, but then, if you could sense, neither you nor any other human being shall ever see us again. I will take my mate and go to the vast and frozen waste to the north. Your body is deformed. Your mind is deformed. I have learned I not control the mind of any creature which I create. If I create a mate for you, she will also have the desire to kill, to inflict misery on others. If you refuse. I swear that all you know and love shall die. If I consent to your demand on your solemn oath, will you take your mate into exile so that no one ever sees you again? Do you? Do you swear to that? I swear you will never behold me again. Now depart to your home. Begin your labors. I shall watch your progress with anxiety. And mark this well. If you fail me, you know the penalty. Farewell, Frankenstein. We shall meet again. You didn't accept the monster's request, Doctor. Uh, after he had left, I sat and sought for a long time. My heart was heavy. Eventually, I returned home where I found my wife and my friend Henry awaiting me as soon as I entered. You've returned. The monster still lives, but will do no more harm. How can you know that? Yeah, I have spoken with him, and oh. there shall be no more deaths. Did you consent to the monster's request? Now, surely you didn't promise to create a mate for him. Elizabeth, there's so much at stake, so much harm has been done. Victor, you cannot do it. Already there's one vile, bloodthirsty monster roaming the earth. Dare you create another? Victor, my friend, what can I do to help? Henry, I must grant the monster's demand. I tried to kill him. My shot wounded him, but he did not die. And before I could fire again, he took the gun from me. W what did you promise him? I promised a mate. You didn't. I did. But my work shall not be done here. I will travel to some lonely island. There I will create a... You must not do this. Please, Elizabeth, life's in danger. Well, then I shall accompany you, and I will help you with your work. You will? Yeah, a friend of mine has a cottage on Isle Royal, and <laughs> I know that he'll let us stay there, but I'm against it. Do not think you should do it. I must do it. 
If I grant this request, there will be no more further trouble. How can you be sure? We shall tell Elizabeth. Which seems the only way. Dr. Frankenstein says, Elizabeth, I have been talking matters over with Henry, mm -hmm. and he thinks I should go away with him for a while. What? And my health has been undermined by all this worry. And you're going away without me? But you will be safe here. I oh. know the monster did not harm you. I feel that I must go away without you this time. Where are you going? Will you not trust him to my care, Elizabeth? Uh, well, I, I will, Henry. But I want to ask you one question, Victor. Do you intend to grant the monster's demand? My dear, I'm going away from here, so I will not grant the monster's oh. demand. Oh. My laboratory and all my instruments are here. <laughs> I'm leaving them. Good. I'm striving to forget about the monster's need, so you need have no fear oh. now that the monster will do no further harm. What did you say to him? I spoke with him, and he swears that he will not commit another murder. It is he not to be punished for the murders he's already committed? Oh, there's nothing we can do at present, my dear. Well, the sheriff's men find the monster. They will kill him. Believe me, Elizabeth, Victor is acting for the best. Be content to leave him in my care. Well, it seems to be the only alternative. You have nothing to fear, Elizabeth. I will recover my health, and yeah. when I come back, I swear that you and I shall never be parted again. Yes. Yeah. Did you eventually go to that island, Baron Frankenstein? Yes, I went to the island, Isle Royal. It was summertime, and there Henry and I took up residence in a cottage. I worked for months, and at last I molded a form which I hoped someday would have life, and I would be the mate of the monster which I had created. Henry remained at my side. Victor, I don't know whether you are doing the right thing here. I have doubts myself. Yet I must go on. The original monster you created, he may have died by now, and if you continue with this work, you may have to destroy it. Sometimes I feel that the monster which I created will destroy me. By the way, have you heard from Elizabeth lately? Yes, letter yesterday. She begged me to return home, wonders why I'm delaying so long. She must never know what I am doing. Well, will we be here much longer? If I walk through the night, it will be merely a matter of waiting for a thunderstorm, and that might come tomorrow, and then my work will be complete. Courage, my friend, but remember, it's not too late to destroy the body. What was that? The basement window flew open. The strong wind must have blown it open. Strange. I'll, I'll close it before it gets too cold. Ah, uh, it's better. Good night, Henry. I will see you in the morning. Good night, Victor. If I had only never attempted to create a monster. Who's that? I said I would be watching over you, Frankenstein. The monster? I have watched you these many days. I traced you to this lonely island, and I am happy knowing that now you are obeying my orders, knowing that soon I am to have a companion alike in my own likeness. Why, 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 why do you haunt me? Anger me not, Frankenstein. I am living for the day when that form which lies before me shall have life. Then there will be one creature on this earth which will not regard me with shuddering hatred and loathing. I cannot make another in your likeness. Frankenstein, remember the threat I made to you. Unless you complete your work, unless you make me a companion, all those whom you love shall die at my hands. <laughs> I will go now, but I will not be far away. And I hope that soon your work here will be complete. I bid you farewell, we shall meet. Did the monster trouble you again that night, Dr. Frankenstein? I did not see the monster again that night, but I second thought for many hours, realizing that my work was a great sin, remembering the face of the monster. I was sitting there when dawn broke. My friend Henry came in and found me. And as soon as he saw me, he said, 
character, have you been here all night? I have, Henry. Is your work complete? It is not complete. But I received a visit from the master last night, and I know now that I cannot complete this work. I dared not make another fiend. I had not the right to do it. Well, did he threaten you? Yes. If I create this female, there is no knowing that she will accept the monster as a mate. She may have the same murderous purposes. I dare not do it. Give me that iron bar. What will you do with it? Just watch. You will see. I will destroy all traces of my work. Look. I smash lifeless form to Adam as I smash its form so I defy the monster. I will no longer fear it. I will destroy it. Victor. Victor, you're close to madness. Yes, close to madness. See, see now what I've done? The monster should never have a mate. The monster, he stands outside the window now. I still have the iron bar. I shall destroy him as I destroyed the form that was to be his mate. Look at your creation. Look at the one you have destroyed. And I am glad I destroyed You also destroyed your promise. To think that I, cold blood, would set loose upon the earth another monster who delights in death and wretchedness. I will kill you. <laughs> Careful, Victor. I do not fear him. I'll seize that iron bar oh, from his grass. <laughs> Frankenstein. Who do you think you are to be happy while well, I am not? Mark my words, we will meet again on the day that you are reunited with your wife. You and I will come face to face again. Andrew, will you not help me kill him? We're helpless. He stands out there with the window. He took an iron bar out of your hands, bent it like it was a twig. Well, fear me, my creator. I now your master. <laughs> <laughs> Aboard the ship, Baron Frankenstein is confined to his cabin, recovering. During his convalescence, he tells the story of his tragic experiences to Captain Walton. Well, the weather seems to be slowly improving, Dr. Frankenstein. Captain, when you leave, you leave me here. We shall certainly not leave you here. Oh, but you must. I cannot return to civilization until I am sure the monster of my creation is dead. You were in the last stages of exhaustion when you came aboard this vessel. We've nursed you back to health and strength. Come back with us. Forget about the monster. I feel sure that he has perished out there in the blizzard. Oh, if I could only feel sure. Tell me some more of your story. What happened after you had destroyed the companion you were making for the monster? The monster returned and threatened me. He swore that he would see me again on the day that I returned to my wife. And did you leave the island then? I arranged with the friend Henry that we should leave the island a few days later. When the supply vessel arrived, the crew was sent ashore to carry our effects to the ship. This vessel was under the command of a legendary Scottish Great Lakes saving veteran, Captain McDougall. And he came ashore and he spoke with Henry and me. As far as we're going on this trip. Tell me, Captain McDougall, is your vessel watched closely? What do you mean by that, Dr. Frankenstein? Has anyone else tried to get aboard the vessel? Well, certainly not. The vessel is moored about 100 yards from shore, and the only boat that came was the one boat, and no one could get into that boat but you two passengers. Oh, shucks. Uh, my briefcase has been left in the cottage, and... I'll only detain you for a moment, Captain. I'll go get it myself. All right, very well. We'll wait for you. Do not take too long, Henry. I've got to get off this island as soon as possible. Only be a few minutes. Very good. Now, Captain McDougall, I would like you to give Cruz your instructions to see that no one but Henry and myself attempt to board this vessel. It's imperative that the monster should remain here. Perhaps even he would die of starvation. Monster? What monster is this, Dr. Frankenstein? A huge, deformed creature, murderer. A murderer on this island. If that creature is not allowed to board your vessel, if we keep a bunch of lie, there's nothing to fear. Mm. I'm hopeful that I will never see or hear of him again. Ah! What the word is that? What? What is ah! that? Victor, come help me. Henry! Help me! What does all this mean? Bring him in quickly. Come. Come quickly and follow me. Yes, Doctor. Open the door. Open 
open the door. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness, let me see that. Look oh, at my him. goodness, no. Look at him, Captain McDougal, he's dead. Look at those marks on his throat. This is the monster's work. He has carried out his promise. But who is this frightful creature? Let, let me order my men to search for him. The island is small, we must find him. Damn your men. Tell him to shoot on sight. Yes, Doctor, but what does the creature look like? Much bigger than an ordinary man. With long yellow fangs that show between his lips. A monster of hideous cruelty. Oh, he must be found and slain. What is his name? He has no name. I created him. You created him? You, you created this monster, Dr. Frankenstein? That's the truth. Tell your men to search for this monster. Tell him to slay him. Leave me here with my friend, Henry. Will you be safe here? Go, Captain. I beg that you strive to find the monster and slay him. All right, I will gather my men at once and we'll search the island thoroughly. You should return to the vessel as soon as possible, Dr. Frankenstein. Henry. Had I but heeded your advice, you would have been alive today. Now I've lost my friend. I know that my wife is in danger. Oh, mighty Father in heaven, I know that I have sinned. I beg for thy forgiveness. I ask that I may live to avenge those who have died because of my crime. Hear now my prayer. Dr. Frankenstein, was the monster found on the island? Captain McDougall and his men searched the island thoroughly, but there was no trace of the monster. He had not even left a footprint. So I left the island, and in due time we landed at Duluth, and at last I arrived north of Grand Rapids once again, and I saw Elizabeth. is almost bursting with joy to see you again after all these months. Oh, my darling. Uh, Elizabeth, I'm so happy to feel my arms about you once again. Let me look at you. Have you fully recovered from your illness? Have you forgotten the nightmares and the horrors of the past? I am well, Elizabeth. Well, no, look, this is not a cold, Victor. You look drawn, very pale. I have had a long and tiring voyage, but... I will be better soon. What ails you, dearest? Did Henry not come with you? Uh, Henry, uh, Henry is not returning. Is not returning? He sends all of his love to you. Well, that's strange. I thought he'd come back with you. Elizabeth, I'm tired. But tell me of yourself. Have you been happy here? Oh, how could I be happy while you were away from me? Oh, but I looked forward to this day when you would return. Have you seen anything of the monster. I'm living in the hope that he has perished, that we will never hear from him again. Has there been any reports that he has been seen around here in the last few days? Why do you think that? I have you seen anything of him yes, during your yes, travels? Yes, you I have? saw him oh, once. No. I have so hoped that that horrible creature was dead. Why are you looking so worried, Victor? What's happened? Elizabeth, I beg you will not leave the house on the company to stay by my side always. Whatever you do, wherever you go, if you do leave my side, carry this pistol with you. A pistol? But do you think that's necessary? He's a blood-crazed inhuman creature. We must act on our behalf. We must try to kill him before he does any further damage. Further damage? Has he committed another murder since you left me here? <laughs> Victor! Victor, did you hear that? The monster's laugh. Yes. He's returned. Oh, listen, <gasps> I am so sorry. Now, Elizabeth, you understand why I must guide you carefully. But I thought he had promised never to take another human life. He did not keep his promise. Nor did I keep mine. <laughs> Oh, he's outside that door, Victor. What can we do? I will lock the door. You're not safe in here. Oh, I'm terrified. Oh, I have kept my promise, Frankenstein. You broke yours to me. It seems that my creator can make a promise and break it, but I do not break promises. Have you been fearing more the death of your friend, Henry? Henry? Is he dead? I, 
I will explain later, <laughs> I am going now, Frankenstein, but I will not be very far away. Not very far away. What will we do? I will arrange for a bodyguard to come to the house. Tell me about Henry. I... I was trying to keep the news from you. <laughs> Henry has been killed. <gasps> Murdered by the monster, oh. oh Elizabeth. Are we to spend the rest of our days in fear and terror? You might never just cease to suffer because of the crime which I committed. Now, now, we'll take every precaution to protect ourselves. The monster desires me to live on and suffer. But I'm afraid for you. Tomorrow, you should leave here. No, Victor, we must never be parted again. We have each other. I will send a message to the sheriff at once. I will ask him to send his best man to act as a bodyguard. Doctor, did the sheriff send someone to protect you from the monster? Yes, yes, he did. A man called Fabian was sent to the house. We were prisoners in our own home still. There was no sign of the monster, but there came a day and I sent for Fabian. I discussed with him the best plans for finding the vile creature. Be seated, Fabian. Thank you, sir. Tell me. Where is Elizabeth? Uh, she has gone to her room to read, sir. I, I saw that a door was locked, Baron Frankenstein. Do you, do you think we need an extra bodyguard in the house? That it might be advisable to have another man here. Fortunately, we are all well armed. Elizabeth never goes anywhere without her pistol. Uh, you and I carry too. Yes, but do you think the monster is somewhere on the ground? I've had the ground searched each day and still there are no sign of the monster. I do not know where he can be. Very well, let's send a message to the sheriff. Let's ask him to send another man here. Oh, this is, this is very strange. Door would not open? Let, let, let me see that, Doctor. Why, it appears to be locked. Uh, My wife, she's upstairs in her room. We must get yes, out of yes, here, of Lance. course, of course. That is Elizabeth. Help me break in the door. This door appears to be too heavy. I cannot... We must get out of here, my wife. But I heard a scream. I heard a shot. Hurry, Fabian. Ah! I, I've broken a panel, sir. We break it off. Break right, it off. Right, break it off. Go the, break off another. I'm doing the best that I can there. Uh, now let me go through. All right. Look, sir. At the foot of the stairs. Elizabeth. What has happened? The marks on her throat. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm afraid she's dead. Choked to death by the monster. He kept his promise. I must go for help at once. We are helpless. No one can prevail against the brute which I created. He swore to kill my wife, and now he has kept his promise. You are distressed in the telling of the story, Dr. Frankenstein. I shudder now as I recall the horror of that moment. But I shall live to avenge her. The monster must die. What is that? It can't be real. The monster's here on the ship. We meet again, Frankenstein. And I can lock this door behind me. Why have you come here? I have hoped that you were dead. I have come to tell you that I will slay no more of your friends unless they seek to slay me. I have but one life to claim now. Who's yours, Frankenstein? The creature shall kill the creator. <laughs> Mark my words, Frankenstein. Before this ship leaves, you shall die. I only pray that before the ship leaves, I am given the strength to kill you. I will be content to die when you are dead. Think not to escape me, Frankenstein. Your life and mine are bound together. I go now, but be prepared. The end may not be far. Captain. Tell your men to keep a close guard whatever you see that the officer armed and carry a farm yourself. Captain Walton immediately reminded his crew what they already knew. Remain armed and alert. After the search of the ship, he returned to hear more of Frankenstein's story. 
There, Captain. He cannot board this vessel now without being seen. I placed men on guard all over the ship. You do not know what he can do. I am his creator, and I am afraid. Did you say that the monster is impervious to bullets? I did not say that. He has suddenly been wounded twice, but he has recovered. Well, if we have another visit from him, it shall be his last. I swear that we shall kill him. I hope so. Do you feel you're able to tell me what happened after the death of your beloved wife? Yes. I can still hear his words. Now all men are against you. They know that you created me. You have become an object of hatred and contempt. You are now without a mate. Suffer now as I have suffered, Frankenstein. You have made your creature stronger than yourself. <laughs> My work is done now. What happened, Dr. Frankenstein? Did the monster make his escape? He climbed through the window and with surprising agility he climbed onto the roof. I could not go after him, but I called for help. The door opened and the sheriff entered, and as soon as he saw me... Baron Frankenstein, what's happened? Sheriff, use your pistol, put an end to my life. I cannot live on. Yeah, but what has happened? Elizabeth and Fabian both murdered by the monster. Murdered by the monster which you say you created? I did create him, and may God forgive me for that sin. It seems my suffering is never to end. I am the guilty one of murder of these innocent people. Well, if you're the creator, as you say, then it is your responsibility to find him and destroy him, Baron Frankenstein. I know it. I, I've, I've checked with the authorities and there is talk of ordering your arrest. Now, if you created this evil, you should be punished and the people of the village are talking against you. They say that you should be hanged for these murders. I know that I turn this murderer loose upon society and that while he lives there may be other murders. Therefore I swear a sacred oath that while there is breath in my body, while I live, I shall devote my life to tracking him down. Yeah, but we feel that if you remain here, that monster's gonna take other lives and they could be in danger. The monster was correct. All men are against me. Am I to suffer as my creature has suffered? It seems like his revenge is indeed complete. Well, I advise you, for your own sake, leave here today. I'll leave very soon. Spare me a few minutes that I may pray beside the body of my beloved wife. Then will my journey commence, and where it will take me I do not know. But if it be to the end of the earth, I will find him and destroy him. Well, so be it, Baron Frankenstein. I can see that you're unharmed as you will leave the village. So, Baron Frankenstein, you were forced to leave Marcel. Yes. When I left my northern Minnesota home, my first act was to try to find some clue by which I might trace the steps of my fiendish enemy. Then I heard a sound behind me, and I looked up, and it was the monster watching me. He did not speak, but fled away. I pursued him only to lose him, but he left a trail of death and disaster wherever he went. And for many months, the secret pursuit bent on. Baron Frankenstein had been describing his life story to Captain Walton of the ship North Star since they discovered him near Grand Marais. The Voyager had been icebound for many days, but the storm subsided. The temperature was warming, and the thaw was setting in, and the vessel would soon be free from the ice that had surrounded it. Captain Walton brought this good news to the Baron. Baron Frankenstein, our journey homeward is commencing. There are several patches of water around us. We're capable of slowly breaking the ice that is still there, and very soon we will be underway. I must leave the vessel at once. I know the monster is still alive. I cannot let you leave, Baron Frankenstein. You know that. You had no power to keep me here. Well, we're not making very much progress yet, and before you do anything rash, I would sincerely like to hear the remainder of your story. I'm right and all in my journal. Hey, well. When did you try to find the monster, Baron Frankenstein? I pursued my journey to Hemingway, and then I eventually went to the village of Silver Bay, 
and then to the lake. The snow thickened and the cold increased. I was rewarded by a glimpse of my deadly enemy. I realized that I was being led to the frozen lake. Then I lost him. I wandered through the snow in the blizzard, gradually finding my way to the ship where you gave me your kindness and hospitality, Captain Walton. Very bizarre tale, Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah, the story is not over yet. You know now why I cannot return with you. There's no place for me in the halls of men. I must kill the monster, and then I will be content and die. Who's there? What's oh, Mr. Boyd, sir? The vessel's beginning to slip. The ice is breaking. More even than now, Captain. I think you better come on the deck. Very well. Then I must leave the vessel. You cannot leave the vessel, Dr. Frankenstein. That would be madness. I must. I cannot let the monster roam about killing people at will. You're not strong enough yet to leave. I will return and discuss the matter with you later. Come, Mr. Boyd. Yes, sir. Have you any orders to give, Captain? The vessel is soon to move. Better be kept upon this course. Aye, aye, sir. Have any of the men seen signs of the monster? Sir, we've seen nothing for the past few days. By tomorrow, we should be well on the journey homewards, and I do not think we'll have any more to fear from the monster. Yes, but what of Baron Frankenstein? Are we taking him with us? You do not think we could leave him here? Uh, sir, the, the men are, are afraid of him. They, they say he's responsible for bringing that evil aboard. They, they say all their lives are in danger. I, I beg of you. Put Baron Frankenstein ashore. I am the commander of this vessel, Mr. Boyd. Yes, sir. Baron Frankenstein stays. Now, the men have been inactive all the while the ship has been icebound. They've been, I'm afraid, grumbling lately. Well, tell them we start our homeward journey now. They fear Baron Frankenstein, sir. They, 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 they fear this monster. They say that the Baron must be put ashore. And I refuse. If anyone attempts to harm him, they will answer to me. But what if that monster comes aboard? What if it means loss of life here? All the officers are armed. If the monster comes aboard, we will shoot. But it will be easy for the monster to come aboard, sir. Look, there's still ice all around the ship. There's water on the one side. We'll watch the ice bounce. But what if the crew mutiny, sir? Gather them here and I'll address. All right. All hands on deck! Right, sir. Wise, what, what the old man wants now sir. is ridiculous. So far, this voyage has been a success, and we will not be marred by any signs of mutiny on the part of the crew. I was only yes, trying sir. to do my duty and tell you what the men felt, sir. I'm aware of that. I assume I have the loyalty of the officers. Yes, sir, we will obey you, but we're afraid of this monster. And, and if you remember, he, he once attacked me. I remember. All hands on deck! Aye, aye. aye, sir. Aye, sir. Men, yes, sir. you've all given me your loyalty, and you've assisted me to make the journey a success. I ask you now not to bar that voyage by any murmurs of mutiny. I am told that some of you are afraid of our guest. Yeah. There is no need for you to fear him. As regards to the strange monster which has come aboard this vessel, you are all armed, and if he comes aboard, you shoot. Continue your trust in me, men. I will take you back home safely. That is all. I uh, Dr. Frankenstein! Wait, wait! I heard what you said, Captain, but you need have no fear. I, I will go ashore now. I cannot allow you to go ashore. As important, you cannot keep me here against my will. Besides which, your crew do not wish me upon this vessel. The crew will obey my orders. I have a duty to do. I cannot send a man to certain Captain death. Captain Walton, Captain Walton, I cannot thank you for all that you have done for me. Do you not realize that life is over for me? I created a monster, and that monster has gradually destroyed me. I live only for one thing witness the death of the monster. I am already destroyed. We shall not meet again. Very well, Baron Frankenstein. There is still ice for you to walk across. I'll have a ladder lowered at once. But I shall always feel it on my conscience that I deserted you and left you here to perish. For me, death will be a merciful release. So go, Kent. When you return to port, you may publish his notes in your journal so that all may know of my folly. 
No way. He he he's collapsed through the ladder. I, I think Baron Frankenstein is trying to speak. I am to be cheated of my vengeance. I know. I know it. I feel for the first time the icy clutch of death has come close to me. Captain Walton. Hear what I say. What is it, Dr. Frankenstein? Should you see the monster again, get your men to fire and shoot to kill. I promise you we will do that. I must not die leaving him alive. This is indeed my greatest punishment. But you may not die. Let me give orders that you to be brought back to the ship. Oh, it's too late for that. Even now. All grows dim. Oh, God, forgive me for my great sin. I have suffered because of my ambition. I have paid the penalty. I go to join my Elizabeth, and I beg thy forgiveness, O oh Lord. Is there anything we can do for you, Dr. Frankenstein? Nothing. Nothing, Captain Walton. I commit my soul to God and beg that you consign my body to the dark black waters. That is the only favor I, I could ask. Uncover your heads, men. Baron Frankenstein passed away. May God receive his soul. Are you going to carry out his final wishes, Captain? Is his body to be consigned to the sea? His body shall be consigned to the sea. Look, they're, they're coming across the ice. The monster, be ready with your pistols, men. He approaches the ship. Show no fear, we're ready to deal with him. He, he's climbing the rope ladder. Shall we fire? Do not fire until I give the order. He's, he's, he's coming aboard. Wait, wait until I give the word to fire. My master, my creator. Firemen! You will destroy me, but I still have life. Let me look upon the body of Frankenstein. Shall we fire, Captain? Wait! Uh, Frankenstein, you are dead. Victim of my hatred, victim of your own selfishness. Soon then, oh, I am to die. They have dealt me mortal wounds, Frankenstein, my creator, my creator. I mourn for you. You mourn for him? You drove him to this? I know that I do not deserve your sympathy. I swear, I was not born to hate, but. Men turned from me, and my creator would not aid me. Tell me, what was Frankenstein's last wish? That his remains be consigned to the sea. And then I will carry his wish out. Look over the side of the vessel, that deep black pool of water. That shall be the grave of Dr. Frankenstein and, and his creature. With my last remaining strength i raise his body in my arms and creator and creature will lie in the cold death together beneath those dark waters he he's oh. he he's taking the body captain shall we shoot him no i'm about to leave this world but let everyone learn of this story tell them frankenstein's monster from which all men turn just as other creatures. And by those feelings, so was he forced to wickedness and crime. Ah, my master, that which you created is now to be destroyed, and I carry you to your last resting place. Let, 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 let us kill him, Captain Walton. No, he goes to his death of his own free will. As I destroyed you, I destroy myself. Never more will man learn the secret of how to create man. Frankenstein and his creature now vanish forever from mortal kin. Captain, let your men look on us. No one else should ever behold us. 
I go now with my creature. Baron Frankenstein's genius was overcome by his misunderstanding of the consequences. An accomplished scientist ignored the direction of his closest friends. Some people to this day say he left a reminder of his story so no one would forget. Should you drive north of Grand Rapids or west of Marcel, and find yourself at the end of Forest Service Road at 3519. You will be on the shores of Lake Elizabeth. <laughs> were we to have grown up in a market with talent like this, huh? <laughs> Dave Lee. Um, what an amazing night. I don't think any of us knew what we had in store for us. And I see Don Shelby. And I know what he's gone through physically to get to this day. He is one incredible man. Yes. Now, don't forget to stop by the silent auction checkout. <laughs> to claim your items, the Pavic Museum gift shop will be open, special on Saturday night until 9 p.m. And please give a round of applause to Kaylin Laird, Advancement Manager, who will be closing out the evening. What a memorable evening. Kathleen, take it away. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, everybody. Everyone, give it up for Mike Max. Of course, none of this would have been possible without this incredible cast and our Foley team. Thank you for sharing your time and talent making this show what it is. I want to give a special thank you to our dedicated Pavic Museum staff and volunteers. Your passion for the Pavic Museum is truly appreciated. And tonight, I'd like to thank our wonderful sponsors, Citizens Independent Bank, Hubbard Broadcasting, Minnesota Broadcasters Association, St. Paul Neighbor Network, and Archibald Studios, who is doing our photography. Please join us for mingling as we close out the evening and give a warm round of applause to our amazing cast, MC, volunteers, staff, and sponsors. Yeah. 